Hello, I'm Jenny Macmillan. I'd like to talk about what I call down-up technique, a technique I use when the music calls for a strong sound followed immediately by a soft sound, as in slurs, broken octaves, um cha cha basses, repeated notes and syncopated rhythms. These are occasions when the weight of the arm can be used to help produce a good, strong, deep sound for one note or chord, followed by a light floating arm for a soft sound. Let's take Allegro by Suzuki. Four crotchets, strong, soft, medium, soft, is the normal pulsing for four beats in a bar and we want, need that particularly because the second note of a repeated note of a pair of repeated notes is often a little bit softer than the first note. Strong, soft and then medium for the third beat. Strong, soft, medium, soft. What am I doing to produce the strong sound? I'm lifting my arm and I'm dropping and for the soft sound I'm raising my wrist and I'm just that note on the way up. So for the drop I recommend starting by practicing clusters, lifting and dropping. Keeping the wrist up, don't allow the wrist to drop as you play your cluster because then you actually we actually lose the quality of sound. Maintain this strength here and then just relax all the way down from the shoulder. Don't stay Stay where you are, just relax. Then just try with any one finger. It's fine to make a smudge. It's the, at the moment we're practicing for getting the big deep sound. It's the drop we want and it doesn't matter if we smudge at this stage. However, we do actually need finger five on the G. Let's aim for the finger five on the G keeping the wrist up. Now eventually we don't want to drop through the keyboard, we need to actually stay on the keyboard. And when I land, I then relax from the shoulder, I just roll through, I roll the finger, I roll forwards to relax. Because if we stay there, it can be a bit stiff. So just relax. Now in fact, in this piece, it starts with a staccato note, so to make the note staccato, I'm just going to stroke with my finger when we get there. But I'm going to keep the hand still down here, I'm not going to bounce up, because then I would get another strong sound for the second note, which I don't want. So I lift, I use the weight of my arm to drop, I keep this wrist level, and I, I, I flick through with the fingertip and roll. And now I want the soft sound. Now I keep rolling, the wrist lifts up, I'm moving forwards, and just before the fingertip leaves the key, I just stroke it like a little butterfly stroke. I'm just here with my little soft hand, and I raise the wrist, and I just catch the note. And then the second note is the finger two on D, and because it's only a beat three, it's a medium soft, I'm not lifting so high, so I lift quite high for the first beat of the bar, and medium high for the third beat of the bar, strong, soft, medium, soft, listening carefully to those sounds that you're producing. If we look at slurs, let's take the first movement of Beethoven's Sonatina in G. Strong, soft, strong, soft, strong, soft. Lift for the first one. Hold on because we're a legato. Roll through. Catch the note. And perhaps we're going to get softer through each of the pairs. So we lift more. Lift medium. Lift less. Broken octaves, a Bach musette. Two beats in a bar, strong, soft, medium.
medium sum, strong sum, medium sum. Drop down to the first one. We're doing little circles here or ellipses. Uh, drop down, but don't let the wrist drop. Don't do a karate chop. Keep the hand. There's this nice little soft uh, hand here. Do a circle and start moving round here. We're just lifting the hand and playing this thumb as the hand, as the tip of the thumb leaves the key. We could practice two octaves. Notice I'm not trying to stretch at all, I'm just keeping my soft little relaxed hand. We could stretch, practice three octaves. We could practice four octaves. So here we are, just one octave, little circles. Um cha cha basses, Chopin walks in A minor. soft second and third beats thinking up up I'm walking in as I play I'm up and I, that takes me in for the second chord just the first and the second beats. Which gives us more time to think about how we play the first beat and the sound of the first beat. Or we could play just the first and the third beat. Which gives us more time to think about how we're going to play the chord up here. We could practice just the bass note in the left hand and the chords softly in the right hand. Listen to the difference in the sound. Sing softly, sing softly each time. Syncopation. Um, Excess by Beethoven. We've got this beautiful interval of the sixth here. Um, this is beat one and two. So although this is the first beat, it's relatively soft. Beat one and a half is the, the interesting note, the emphasized one, the one that's syncopated, followed by a very soft last beat of the quaver of, of the last quaver of the, the bar. With syncopated notes, sometimes one doesn't actually want the note particularly strong. One wants it to stand out as being important and interesting. And so delaying the note actually works. And by doing, exaggerating this circular movement, this movement over the top, that naturally delays the note. Um, so it works very, very beautifully. The left hand is, is also um, a down, up, 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 an um, cha, cha, cha bass. sounds are varied. Repeated notes, slurs, broken octaves, um, cha-cha basses and syncopated rhythms 
all benefit from this down-up technique. The more we can produce a variety of sounds through natural movements, the more comfortable and convincing will be our interpretation of the music.